This is an evening like 10 years in the making. Hello, stagey fam. Oh my god, hey. It is me, and this is... Mickey Joe Theatre. Hello. Hello. So today, we are off to see an exciting new show. We are. What we are. It be? This is an evening like 10 years in the making. This is a musical that kind of everybody has wanted to see, and you will have seen from the title, so I don't know why I'm making it so no, ominous. It's no. It's next to normal, everybody. Yeah, we're so going we're, to see next to normal. We're off to see next to normal. Next to... We're off to see next to normal at the Donmar Warehouse. But which... also... We're off to see next to normal, like. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you understand the amount of time that we have been waiting for this mm -hmm. show in the UK has been mad. Like there was a, a semi-immersive, like hybrid oh, yeah, pseudo Spain. version of the show in like Barcelona recently, yeah. and we were like, "Do we go to that? Because that's the best we're ever going to get." And then no, months later. We get the actual next normal, not the original Broadway production. This is a non-replica, new, new version, new direction, obviously a new cast, uh, but excited nonetheless. And Casey Levy's back over, which is really exciting because I saw her multiple times in Ghost. I saw it in Manchester when it debuted and then when it came down and like kind of been obsessed with her voice ever since. And it's really cool because it's in the Donmar Warehouse, which is a really small theatre, very intimate. It's where the bands visit and many other big musicals have started their lives. There's a really cool cast. You've got Trevor Dion Nicholas, you've got Jack Wolf, Jamie Parker, Eleanor Worthington Cox. It's just like a full crazy cast. When they were announced, everybody was like, this is kind of a dreamy. It's a great cast. Dreamy. I didn't know what to wear t-shirt wise. I was like, do I wear my Frozen t-shirt for Casey Levy? Do I wear my Matilda t-shirt for Eleanor Worthington Cox? Do I wear my Hamilton t-shirt for Trevor Dion Nicholas? And ultimately I, I couldn't choose. So I'm wearing Oklahoma and no one's happy. <laughs> That's it's just for me. And I've just gone for like a nice suburban look because I feel like that kind of fits with the theme of the show. So the theatre is based in the heart of the West End, but it's not really technically a West End theatre, but it can get Olivier Awards from just a run there. So it's very, it's up for debate. Jury's out. It means that it's near loads of nice food places. So we haven't decided where we're going to go for food yet, but you'll get to enjoy that adventure. And Mickey is at Mickey Joe Theatre on all socials, and I am at Erin James UK. Let's head to London. So we just made it into London, which is quite off at Tottenham Court Road. Then if you come out on the, don't know the right side to say. The side that's not the Dominion and not at Soho Place, but between them, no, that doesn't work either. But south, it's kind south of the main southeast, one. It's kind of the biggest, side. the biggest exit. It's the southeast side. If you get off of that one, there's here at Outernet. If you walk around the corner into this, like, into this square, there's a quick way and cut through to get down towards Seven Dials, which is where the Donmar is. We say quick way, like, if you mapped it out, it's probably longer, but the you just main avoid road all going the down people. has so much walking traffic. Yeah, Tottenham Court is... Road gets really busy. We share a pet peeve, which is other people being in the way. Yeah, Charing Cross Road and that whole area just can be a nightmare, especially if you're like, do what we're doing, which is pre-show. Oh, but... This is really cool. This is so tall because it was for set backdrops. That's where they used to paint set backdrops, which is why it's so tall. And why some theatres sometimes have such a big door is because they used to have to bring them in like that. So that's I why it's very tall. Somebody recently told me when I was saying about this cut through, they were like, wow. oh yeah, because you get to see the big door. What was, I was used to say? The number of times that we've walked down this way, and you've never told me that fun fact before. Yeah, I learned it when I said somebody about a cut through, and they were like, this was a set painting. He saves all his best Area. trivia for YouTube. Yes. So we're just going to cut through. We pass the Phoenix the on Phoenix. this route. And then what was the Savile Theatre, but now is an Odeon, but who knows, could become a theatre again. We're passing the Phoenix stage door, actually. Which is right here. Yeah. So if you ever go to the Phoenix to watch a show and you go to the stage door, that's a cheeky route back to Tottenham Court Road. If you see uh, puppets in casual clothes behind us, it's because Spitting Image Live is currently playing. Yes. And then right over, <laughs> and then right over there is the Theatre Cafe Diner. <laughs> so... It's literally just there's a quick little path up to the Fierce Cafe Diner and we're about to come up to what would have been where the stage door for the Savile Theatre would have been. Which was where Cameron McIntosh stayed his first, staged his first West End show. Yeah. Anything goes. And that was only on for like two weeks and put, got him nervous about West End Theatre and then he bended lameness. That was something that I knew for ages but hadn't clicked it was 
this theatre, but it's now an Odeon. Because you can see where all the dressing rooms would have been. And we've made it into Seven Dials. So right behind us is Matilda and people are already queuing because we think it's a seven. And then right opposite Matilda is Seven Dials. And that's where we're planning to go and get some food. Yeah. And right next to that is the Domo, where we've seen the show. Very easy. So Matilda is here, right where the middle of Seven Dials is. Then you have Seven Dials Market which is kind of like a big street food area where there's loads of different foods, loads of different cuisines and then the Doma warehouse is right here and that is where next to normal is so very nice and easy, we don't need to rush and this is Seven Dolls Market there's loads of different types of food we there's tried one down there and one's up there there's a sushi bar style conveyor belt with cheeses so this is what I normally get it's called El Pelote there's all the choices and this is a really great place if you want gluten free so with all of these places you get one of these i think like quite a lot of places use this method now to get one of these go and find a table mickey has his he's gone to a different place and then you sit here you wait for them to call you and then you head off. It's really good if you've got a group of friends who all have very different type of tastes and stuff. You don't have to all have the same place. So we're both just now waiting for our food. Oh, and I went for an apple flavoured drink called a manzana postable. Which is like an apple drink. It's quite nice. Oh my god, hey, this is Mickey here. So I ordered from Yum Bun, which is over there. And I got two buns for £10. This one is duck with like cucumber and hoisin. Uh, this one is chicken and I'm very excited to try them both. I will let you know. I also got this, which is a passion fruit iced tea. I love nothing in this world like a peach iced tea. And this is just as nice. This one's a How would you rate it? Five. Five out of five. Just for the hoisin sauce. Oh, it works so well. It's so good. This is chicken and other stuff. It's it's resistant to the bun. Mm. It's good. Oh no, it's good. I think I like the dinner. I think I like the pork a little bit better. Mm -hmm. but still good. And mine has come. I will warn, sometimes they can be really delayed depending on how busy it is, so mine took a while longer than Mickey's did, but I'm excited, it looks really nice. It's got a lot of flavour. Got a tiny kick. Not too much, maybe too much, but it's good. It's a thin portion. I'm worried I might be a bit hungry after it, but that's my only thing. My only concern is maybe a little bit hungry. So we needed some dessert, so we went to the Soft Serve Society ice cream. Mickey went for a cookie and ice cream, and I went for an ice cream with a, a couple of toppings. What did you go for, Mickey? I have the soft serve and double chocolate cookie. You can pick any of the cookies. They have some really interesting flavors. I don't know how to eat them together. I think I'm gonna have some of the ice cream and then use this as a spoon, maybe. We'll see. Go for it. So I went for the creme brulee soft serve with marshmallow fluff. But well, we're literally right next to the theatre, so we can literally go to the right, head in, once we finish these, and then we're ready for a show. Woohoo! And here is the theatre. And as you can see, next to normal, sold out. That's Casey Levy. So how did we get our tickets, Mickey? So, uh, we didn't buy straight away when they first went on sale, because we weren't sure what our August was going to look like. But I also wasn't anticipating that we'd get press tickets for this, simply because it's a smaller venue, and I thought even if uh, they have space, it's going to be probably for a single ticket and I wanted you to be able to come with me as well. So on West End Live Day, we joined the queue so far back, we were past the Wyndhams and I thought, oh, I'll go find an Edinburgh Fringe brochure while the queue's not moving. So I went to the Donmar and I was like, while I'm here, do you have any returns for Next to Normal? They didn't, but they added me to a waiting list and then a few weeks later, maybe a month later, 
they gave me a call and they said we've had some stuff come back it's going to go on public sale in about an hour but if you want it before that you can buy tickets and they had a bunch of dates available so uh, don't think that it's futile to join a waiting list it works so this was the show that just finished and here's the show we're seeing today next to normal at the Don Mall with music by Tom Kitt book and lyrics by Brian Yorkie and directed by Michael Longhurst look at that incredible cast yeah so you take these steps over here up to the theatre and then they always have the big projected poster of the show. Well we're gonna go up. Yeah. Hello tiny people who live in Aaron's camera. He's gone to the toilet so I was just gonna show you this programme that he bought from the box office downstairs. Uh, it doesn't have like the artwork or anything on it uh, because this is the house style of the Donmar warehouse. Uh, it's not a commercial venue, so they're also not likely to do merchandise, t-shirts, anything like that. We just get a very uh, matter-of-fact program. That's what we have. And here we are. These are our seats. There's the stage. We're in A2 and A3 of the circle. And the bands are there. So we're quite, we're very close to the action. And the bar's not an issue, really. No. I think it's going to be a pretty good view. It's a very small theatre, so kind of any seat in this theatre is fine, I think. There we are. Hello. Ah. We're in the interval. We're in the interval. The one thing we've experienced is that we're quite close to the smoke machine. So, yeah, the smoke machine is just, like, there, and I can't... I can't fully make out where it is, but every time it activates and releases, which is periodically, I would describe it as just wet. getting doused. Not wet. With a cloud. But like, but like it, it, it gets very misty. The first time it happened, I saw it, I was actually like, oh god, because it just descends and like pops, it disperses really quickly. Yeah, it's but that not, it's not thing, annoying, but it's a bit like, oh my gosh. Um, it it's reminds been a horror me, movie moment. It reminds me of when we went to see Moulin Rouge. And we're it's exactly friend. what it made me think of. <laughs> that is tricky. If you go to Moulin Rouge with a friend, in the cabaret just seat, we'll just off the get stage covered and suddenly in smoke. I just remember us act one finale and we're just like... <laughs> yeah, Milan Rouge, Rouge, be prepared for the smoke is like fully... This isn't too bad, it's no, like this, appears it, this disperses, it just initially just like crawls yeah, and then it goes. And just like, if right. you're on the very edge of a circle right near the stage, which is right there, um, it's smoky. <laughs> We made it back. We did. We swam out of the Donmar warehouse. Literally, the moment we left the theatre, what happened? Biblical rain. <laughs> just so much rain. Like, we literally had an umbrella, but it was like a baby umbrella, so we were running together. <laughs> Thank God we had that, though, because, like, not wearing waterproof outfits. Flashback to me being like, should we bring the umbrella, maybe? Because it looks so a little hooked. bit grey. It was, it was so wet. There was a point where we were going back the shortcut or, the, or the, the quieter way that we told you between Tottenham Court Road, so we're heading back towards Tottenham Court Road. Past the Phoenix. That way. Um, and then I was like, it's more covered, the main roadway, Charing Cross Road, let's cut back past the Phoenix Theatre. And then I don't know what was going on at the Phoenix Theatre, but there was just like these downpours, like a mm -hmm. full shower. Got very wet. Yeah. But it, was, it was a funny evening. We had a great time at Next yeah. to Normal. Stay tuned for full review uh, coming on my channel. Uh, there will be in-depth thoughts. Not often do I actually spend the whole interval making notes on my phone, but he I did. did today. He did. That's the level of thoughts that I have about this production, and I'm not going to give anything else away. Poker face. Poke your face. There was a lot of smoke. I will <laughs> say, if you're at the edge of the circle, just be warned that you will be you'll be having a misty old time. I wish we got it on camera because it kept it happening misty. in the interval. I don't know if it was just on a timer. Possibly, or possibly like, they were like, oh, it's too. Smoke. We, I, I worked out where the pipe was, I was like, oh, it's that one, and it was just like... It did become a nice topic between us and the people next to us on, the, on our row. <laughs> it was this unspoken thing in the first act, and then they came back after going like for drinks or something in the interval, they were like, have you been bothered by the smoke? And we were like, oh my god, yes. <laughs> also, I will say, can I say what was making me laugh right at the end yeah. of Ooh. the show? Um, this is a bit of a spoiler. It's, useful it's not really a spoiler, because they might cut them anyway. There's balloons that appear. 
and it doesn't really mean anything, but it's just a nice sort of atmospheric incidental detail. But they, they, they tend to float around a bit. They're not helium balloons, but every time someone walks on stage, it creates just a bit of a draft. And the yeah. balloons were all blowing towards the people in the front stalls, and two of them collected at this one guy in the audience in the center of the front row. And like he was like chuckling about it, but being so British and like, I won't touch them, I won't interfere, like even though it was like on him. And then this balloon has like moved up to his chest and like climbed up his face. And he's just trying to watch the show and he's moving his I head. I didn't even see this. I saw them fly across towards the front, but I didn't notice them go up somewhere. I missed about 15 seconds of the show because I was just transfixed by these balloons just hugging this one man. I will say this show, I'll, I'll openly say I really enjoyed tonight. Um, I'm so glad that like it's finally come over here and that we've been able to see it because only took 15 years and it's like a show that everybody knows is good like knows that it's phenomenal writing it's a Pulitzer Prize winning exactly. musical there's not many of those no so um it was very exciting we get to tick off another one we've ticked off two Pulitzer Prize winning musicals this year this in a strange loop yeah and yeah it was great to see it. and amazing to see two people that I've seen a bit recently in shows well three people I've seen a bit in shows because we saw Jamie Parker in Benjamin Button, um, Eleanor Worthington Cox, we saw in The Secret Life of Bees, and I'd seen Jack Wolf in The Magician's Elephant, the, Magician's the Elephant. RSC. Yeah. So it was really cool to see them in different roles, and their vocals. Were their vocals. vocals are insane, but the acting is insane. It's all I'm going to say on it, but to find out all of Mickey's thoughts, who was an uber stan of Nick's normal. Via bootlegs, but yes. So you can head over to his channel to see all the things that he thought. And so if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and comment with water of some form to show that you came to the end so you know that we got soaked. Yeah, and let us know if you've seen this production, if you're yes. planning to see this production, if you've got any questions about the production. Or if you've seen production. it before. Yeah, anything else you want to know about the theatre-going experience of Next to Normal at the Donmar or tips on how to get tickets, comment down below yeah. and Aaron will do his best to answer. So, stagey friends, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. bye.